Hello people, my name is Rage, and welcome one and all uh, to uh, the wonderful world of Black Desert. Today, uh, we are very much just going to be having a bit of a play. I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff, a little bit of a single player boss, a little bit of cool NPC, uh, I guess, gossip slash reputation slash ally system it's kind of complicated and just generally induct you more into this glorious world and talking of this glorious world like look what what was this 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 is i i die I, um this is useful <laughs> i didn't even know this was a thing fantastic like literally <laughs> okay so change appearance then? Okay, that doesn't do anything. I'm I'm just gonna I just got very distracted by that. I just genuinely did not expect any form of pop-up. Anyway, look at this view. Is this not wonderful? You just see the particles in the air floating above the foliage like you would the mountains in the difference in the difference? Yes, in the difference. Distance difference. What's the distance? Get it? Like difference because I said it and then I reversed it, but deliberately, I know. And the castle over there. I mean, is it not just very pretty? So as you can see, I'm not on my wizard. I made a sorceress, because you know, I realized something. Don't question the the look it was made on a stream. We don't need to go there. I, I realized that actually I kind of really enjoyed being a sorceress. There's something about their black claws of just doom as they do loads of stuff and just fire black energy and just explode things and then do black lightning and there's just so many cool things that they do and being a melee battle magey magic is kind of nice. One thing I will say that currently I'm a little bit upset at the overlay UI. So what I just did there actually before I tell you about that is this is obviously the world map and it's very very good. These are my quest objectives so I'm like I want to go to this one. I can right click it, it gets a path and now that I've got a path I can do that and then we're gonna go follow the path but of course this is gonna be a much less efficient path. So you see that big ass beam in the air and by the way how cool is it that your quest objectives in the real world are lit with this massive beam. Yeah, it looks a little bit out of place, like why are these mythical beams of heaven porting down and showing me the way, but it's just nice. There's no looking at your map constantly. There's no trying to figure out quest objectives. There's just run at the beam and I'll get there. But of course, because I'm auto running, I'm going to take a very long way around. Of course, it would be more efficient to run straight at it instead of let the lazy auto pathing handle it. So I think there is a quite a nice balance between doing it yourself and letting Letting yourself uh, run there. So let's go have a look at this. So basically every NPC in the world just has uh, little bits of uh, talking that you can do. And if you get enough knowledge about a town by figuring stuff out and talking to people, you see I've only really met Von Gohl in this entire Valley of Farm people, then you can start to have real meaningful conversations, which I will attempt to get to. He's got a quest for me, which is lovely. He's scared and hungry. Ha <laughs> ha, sucks to be him. God, I just hate it if he was scared and hungry. I mean, really. And what does he actually want me to do? I'm going to assume he wants me to kill these foxes. Yes, indeed. There we go. And what I do like about Black Desert, and this may sort of split a few of you, is that general PvE, as we do my lightning here, look at that. Is that not just... Oh, it's good. It is good. But yeah, what I do like is that you feel ridiculously powerful. Like you, one shot, two shot, at most three shot general enemies in the field and that's kind of nice because there's a big thing with MMOs that you beat on an enemy constantly seeing numbers and like if you stab someone you kind of want them to die but you have to stab them 10 times for 10 damage and then you kill them and you know that's fine it's expected in MMO but it's also kind of nice that Black Desert really does make you feel as powerful as you look and you kind of do just slaughter through everything which is really really neat. Did I, did I just fail to failed to do. Oh, I didn't get the other fruit pieces. My bad. So what if we have a look at this, by the way, these pop up all the time. So if I click this, look, I've met Uno. I can read the story about him. I can see what he's up. That's pretty cool. And then I click this one and that's Von Gaul that I just found. There we go. So you end up getting a ridiculous amount of these as you go through the game. So I need to kill myself at some weasels there, learn about them. I can see their health. That is quite good. I need some half-eaten bread, please. There we go. I successfully acquired half 
eating bread. Get on my level, everybody. Get on my level. Hello? Oh, I could purchase this house. This is a, a nice little cottage in the farm. And then there's another one there. And I could add this to my trade empire. And there's going to be a video on the trading system because it is incredibly complex. And honestly, I don't even really fully understand it. Like, just generally... I just don't. Just a little bit of an extra insert I wanted to show you guys here is actually these portals, as cool as it is, where you can purchase your own home, you can actually visit everyone else's home, and it does it in a really nice way. So if we visit rank one here, Mr. Sol, the door opens, and you'd normally think loading screen, maybe something like that, but no, you just simply walk in, and then the room becomes exactly as Mr. Rank one uh, has laid it out all the furniture he's placed where he's placed it and you can just customize place furniture wherever you want to and that's fantastic and then you just leave and it's completely fine the fact that they've managed to fluidly make you go in and out of people's houses this person hasn't even put any furniture in but i just thought it was a really neat thing to do obviously you can look at friends houses and all of that jazz and that's pretty damn fantastic and i think one of the main things about this game is that people have got like 20 hours in it and they've not even got past level 10 because they're just so busy actually exploring and experiencing every little thing that you can do and what I kind of want to quickly do just just as a little extra because I thought I'd record this just I don't know, like a cherry on top for the video, and the servers are going down in but a few hours. I'm really burning the midnight oil with this one, because I'm going to get the maximum I can out of the first beta test, because I really did not have as much time to play this as I obviously would have liked. But I've never been to this castle. I didn't do it in the first one, and I'm, you know what, I'm going to go. I'm going to go over to this castle, and I'm going to see what up. I mean, I have a feeling it's just going to be a normal car. Oh, there's like fields and fields and fields of enemies in front of it. Oh, no, I think I have been here. I think I remember. Yes, I, I, I suddenly, I suddenly remember my secret training and activate the password. No, if I recall correctly, you have to parkour to the top of this for a quest, and it's actually really quite extreme, but I may completely be thinking of somewhere else. There is every chance... I have no idea what I'm talking about. Look at all these goblins just doing their thing. They're just having fun. They're happy. They're not trying to slaughter you on sight, you know? They're just they're just doing what they're doing. Let's see if we can actually find a way up there. I love uh, traveling as the night crow. Yes, indeed. Okay, there's a barricade. Senior soldier. Oh, God. Oh, okay. So this is, I believe, then... A player owned castle and these are the soldiers that they've uh, hired they're the exiles of media these are the soldiers that they've hired to guard their castle how fantastic is that I've actually found a guild owned player castle and these are their men they're not very effective men I'm kind of just walking past them as a level 11 but still this is really cool I obviously it is beta so they're just kind of all stood in random places not really doing much, but the simple fact this is happening is really awesome. I want to kind of get to somewhere you now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they suddenly they suddenly got their act together. Well, there you go, guys. That's very, very intriguing. So they have an army of uh, monsters outside their door, which is kind of probably a problem if you live there. All right, so the final, final thing I want to show you is my favorite spell in the game. It is Dream of Doom. It was Dream of Destruction in Korea, but I guess it's fine it being Doom. So you hold a black spirit ball above your head and then woof, straight up darkness spirit bomb. All right then, guys. There you go. Just a little bit of bonus extra stuff. Oh, I could steal from him. I'm going to steal from him. I got this. Look, we're all being shifty. We're kind of looking, and then we're like, okay, all right, what am I going to do? I'm going to do it. I'm going to steal. I'm going to steal it. All right, did I do it? Did I do it successfully? 
Oh, my level is too low. Damn, I'm not a good enough thief yet. I may be a black magic sorceress, but I'm just not quite good at good old thievery. We will head towards this beam of light here and we'll fight the what are effectively single player bosses. So every now and then you get a quest to defeat quite a big bad enemy that you have to summon through the power of a dark scroll that your dark spirit gets you. And what's also very neat, if I show you my dark spirit, is that they have evolved now. They're not just a cloud of smoke, they've got a mouth and this symbol, and that's quite like, okay, that's interesting, because I found an artifact, and then in a cool cutscene, the spirit got powered up, and there is quite a neat little storyline with that, that we've got this, well, probably incredibly evil spirit kind of attached to us. Let me hop down here, and there he is. Now, I'm just going to watch this happen right now, because I don't want to... Okay, that was that was one hell of a belly flop. That's, uh, that's absolutely fine. That's, uh, that's you know, nobody's going to worry about that. So if I start using my scroll, then I am going to summon myself uh, that giant enemy, and look at the cutscene as you summon your personal boss out the ground, and they form out of all the dark energies, and you're like, yes, I love dark energy monsters! And then we're like, oh, now i got to fight it, and all the, like, the stuff trying to pull it back down into the portal as it break freeze in, into the mortal plane, and is that not a badass way to have a monster summoned? Like, is that not just freaking fantastic? Ow! I got hit by that, that sucks. Dodge, 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 let me put my shield on. I kind of, uh, sort of, uh, play a little bit too much with uh, my uh, keyboard as the sorceress instead of... Uh, using the combo abilities, and the Sorceress definitely has a lot of combo. I'm just going to kick it to death. There we go. I'm just going to straight up repeatedly kick it for death. See, I don't even know if I've done any damage yet. I don't know that I am in a little bit of... Well, I'm not in trouble per se, because I'm dodging it, but the point of this is if you actually get hit, ow, my health, you do start to actually feel some pain. I'm going to... I'm going to start channeling Dark Lightning into it, and we'll see how it handles a full bar of mana powered with my Red Lightning. Actually, it seems to handle it quite well. That's uh, a little bit awkward. And this is the introductory one. This is the first one in the game. They start to get absolutely ridiculous later on. There we go. I brought it down. Obviously, the first one is uh, a lot easier than the other one, so there we have it. And that's just an imp captain. It's not even like a named boss. It's just a particularly powerful imp that a lot of people are killing repeatedly, but we're not going to worry about that. This is, after all, an MMO. Ooh, a weapon box. I do like weapon boxes. I am a big fan of weapon boxes. We get given various upgrades as we go through, which increase our strength. This is the equipment. So basically, I found some armor, and I can obviously take it off, and it basically just gives me sleeves. You know, the magical power of acquiring sleeves is strong. That packed horse over there. I wish I could get to the mount system and show you a little bit about that. It's just... I only have five days in this first closed beta test because it only lasts for five days and I happen to be moving house during this time so I've really not had a large amount of time to properly go for this but we've made it now to the next port and we can have a little talk with everyone a little nice town here with a nice little dock and this is where you can start your shipping empire if you feel the need to be a merchant and work towards buying your own castle. Damn it, I just don't have enough knowledge for you. I mean, the knowledge system is very complex, and honestly, I don't even fully understand it yet, and I've played this game a lot, so you've got to realize that genuinely, this might be at a point where one of the negatives in this game is that there is too much to do, and it is too complicated, and uh, I guess that's both good or bad, depending on how you see it. So basically, every NPC will have an interest, so that person wants to know about the villagers. So if I go around the town and find out about the various uh, villagers, then report back, then they'll actually become my friend. And also, as you just saw there, I climbed up onto that wall, and now I can run across them freely. And while it is a very basic parkour system, don't get me wrong, compared to some of the ridiculous stuff we've seen in other games, for an MMO, being able to walk up to a wall and simply climb over it at the press of a button, that's actually quite a big deal. Like, that's something that's going on there. Aha! We have someone that I can finally have a proper conversation with and I can show you what's going on. Oh, man. So, 
if we back out of this for now and... Uh, we need to identify what their interests are. So we have Grand Zero in literally everything. And this is Zyria, who is a fan of wealth. So if we want to talk to them about something, we could talk to them about all the various animals we've found. So I'm going to assume that you like mature tree spirits, that you're, that you're a fan of mature tree spirits. I could see you being all over those. Oh, she likes wolves, actually. Interesting. Okay, I guess I guessed wrong. So every NPC has a star sign, and if you fill it with knowledge that they appreciate and then talk to them, they'll become a much bigger fan of you. So I'm going to talk to them about wolves, foxes, grass beetles, and immature tree spirits, and then we'll see what happens. Are they far? They don't like wolves. They do like foxes. They do like grass beetles, and... They do like tree spirits, so three out of four, that's not bad. I've now got nine favor and uh, a little bit of interest. I'm sparking a slight bit of them. So if I keep going on this path and keep talking to them, keep having conversations, keep telling them about what they want to hear, eventually we'll get to a point where they actually help me become my ally and perform some sort of useful service, or I can use them to do something. And... Uh, so many NPCs have that option, and it's such a complex system, because, say this person likes animals, I've got then got to go out into the world, find various species of animals, beat them down in order to learn about them and their habitat and biology, then report back, tell this NPC about them, and then they become my ally. Also, this caravan right here is player controlled, they are trading between towns with their goods, and that's how it's going down there. In fact, this is, uh, oh, that's a luxury vendor. I don't have any money for luxury what do you want from me? What do you want from me? So, oh, okay, I see. So this is, it's not that they're interested in wealth, it's that they are a wealth-based NPC. That makes more sense. So I could talk to them about the various characters that I've uh, found. So you do have to do, honestly, quite a little bit of investigation work more than anything to uh, understand what people want. And then these are the trade goods here, and you can see the graph of how they're doing if they're up or down in price, and you can choose to ship them between the towns and sell them on to players and NPCs, and honestly, I can't even tell you more than that. It's such a complicated system, it's quite ridiculous. We have the Stable Master over here, and uh, let's see if we can't get ourselves... Oh, we don't have any mounts, that's so upsetting. And of course, you can breed horses in order to breed the very best horses and have better horses horses and everyone else, and they breed up through the tier of horses until you have absolute badass ones, so yes, you can make your living in this game being a horse breeder, which is just insane. Can I actually afford one? No, I'm not even close to be able to afford a horse. I have 3,000 money, and they cost 15k. I mean, in the previous beta, you just got given a horse for free. Quite frankly, I feel robbed. I feel absolutely robbed. But no, I, I do need to continue on with this. Oh, can I have a new con? No, I can't have a new conversation with me. Your symbols lied to me. But we have found the chief, at least, who was looking quite scary there. That's interesting. What do you want for me? Okay, I will accept that, and I will go do it for you, for I am the best! So you see, even in this just short little video here, that we have so much going on in this game that I just... I don't even know where to begin or how to structure it, and in this initial beta, while I'm still low level and just uh, getting back into grips with the game, I just kind of want to do this and just show you stuff, just tell you stuff, and uh, hopefully spark your interest... Uh, in this. So we've now reached the uh, dock keeper and then immediately barged past him because we're cool like that. And there we go. So we've unlocked a little bit more of a talk with him. We can use two energy to talk to him about his various bits of information that he wants from us, and that's kind of nice. Help! I don't need help! What are you talking about? I have no need for help. I have a parked horse here. Do you have a parked horse? No, you don't have a parked horse. I have a parked horse. You shut your whole, whole horse mouth. I don't know where I'm going with this, but that's absolutely fine. Learn about the parasitic bees, which basically means kill all the parasitic bees. And you can even see trade carts on their way through other towns. So you can go over the map like this and see, oh, look, 
a trade uh, caravan is about to set out. Maybe I could hunt that down and try and steal it for myself. And the amount of information the world map shows is uh, just absurd. The fact that you get such detail on everything is just absolutely incredible. It's such a refreshingly nice world map. And for once, all the information isn't actually overwhelming. It's just very, very useful. That's one colourful horse down there. And what I was trying to say at the start of the video, I think there is too much stuff on screen that is distracting you from what you are supposed to be doing, which is just focusing on and enjoying the game. So I really think when it comes to release, there needs to be a way to really cut down on the clutter that you have going on and it will really really enhance the experience because other than that everything has just been splendid so far there is a unparalleled amount of stuff to do the combat is great the world is great it's very unique it's enjoyable i mean there is a lot going for this oh we have another major character who's not yet voice acted but there will be voice acting in the final game you know he's probably a a key character <laughs> Oh, good times. Good times. That is, that is where it's at. That is, that is how we do it. Okay. We have discovered since coming here, we've discovered Shackers, Mr. Logia, Croix, Abelin, Alfredo, Claire, Zaria, Pulvio, Elmos, Lorenzi, Emirnil, Rental Storage, Valia, Dark, and Alstin. And then don't forget that Valia, Tarkos, does immortality exist, and the Awakened. It's just ridiculous. Ooh, I have quite a few skills I can learn. Sharp nails to increase that. Oh, and bleed out all the enemies. I can learn an abyssal flare, which is the fire going near me, and then I can blow everyone up. I can learn crow flare, which is nice. Oh, crow flare does look cool. That kind of seems exciting. Oh, yeah, night crow. I can actually use it to teleport. That one is very good. I'm going to learn that one real quick and then show you it because it's a fantastic ability. Assuming it will let me do it if I switch to combat mode. There we go. You kind of sink into the ground and teleport forward. It's just ridiculous. And I can just keep doing it. It's just absolutely absurd. Obviously, an energy bar does limit you a little bit, but generally speaking, absolutely fine. And it's a ton of fun to use that ability. And all these flags that are around the place are guilds that have bought up the property and land in this area who technically own it, who we'd have to compete with and fight with if it came to uh, us wanting to take it over. And of course, if we ever had a Rageacan guild on this server, we clearly would be doing that. But yes, as it stands, there's a little bit more of a crash course in Black Desert, just a few more things that you can do, and I hope you really are starting to like the look of this. Honestly, I really, really do. And you can customize, dye, and change all your armor and stuff like that, so yeah, that is a thing you can do if that's what you're interested in. A lot of people tend to be interested in Okay, still difficult. We've attained a title. That's fantastic. I do love uh, the introductories. I'm excited to experience them when they have voice acting. I really am. But yes, for now, for now, for now, finally, before I get distracted once again, this is my name has been Rage. Remember to like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more, and I will see you next time with a lot more information, probably a lot more focused of a video. Alrighty. A good boy.